how you doing? My name is Joseph. And I'm an organizer with the CPAC organization. CPAC means it stands for Civilian Police Accountability Council. And that's what we want to see. That's what we want as a Civilian Police Accountability Council. So today we're going to be talking about the rallies that we have coming up. We have one rally coming up on the 27th, Tuesday, at the Federal Plaza building. That's going to be from, we at, as a matter of fact, it's going to be starting at 2 o'clock, starting at 2 o'clock. So we definitely look, no, no, 5, 5, 5, 5, sorry, 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Uh, 5 o'clock on the 27th of February this month. That rally is going to be taking place. We had uh, another protest in March last week, Monday. Last week, Monday, we had a protest and a rally on 35th in Michigan right there. And that definitely turned out was good for the CPAC organization. We made sure that we made a point. And our point was made. Our point was that unity plus struggle plus organization equals victory. And it's going to be a long road down till we reach our victory. Victory, But until we reach it, we're going to be prepared to fight, combat, to make sure that we as a people is going to unite under one banner. You know, and I think that's what Donald Trump definitely has brought out. Is this almost uniting us, right? He's making these people come together up under one banner. You know, now all these different struggles are coming together, you know. And so we definitely got to make sure we look towards expand the CPAC to everybody, okay? So since now everybody want to unite under this whole thing that we call justice, you know, no matter what cause you're fighting for, as long as that you see that police brutality is definitely a cause that's worth fighting for, I believe that's what makes you a social justice advocate, not just being for immigration or you just for the school systems like okay yeah i just want to see better school systems but the police brutality eh, i'm gonna hold back off on that that doesn't make you a social activist at all um because you definitely got to be against the man which is the pig you know so if you're in against that then i don't know what you're talking about you know what i'm saying because man it's an everyday process that it takes to get towards revolution and um all these struggles that we all go through as a people, whether it be housing, whether it be uh, ways in the minimum wage, whether it be immigration, all these struggles that we go uh, together as a people, we have to definitely find common ground and a common interest and a common goal for everybody to reach so we can have more of a push when it comes to us making sure the vanguard stays sharp and ahead um, of the fight, you know. Um, I want to want y'all to take a second to look at our flyers that we have for CPAC. You know, um, these are CPAC now flyers. Intact, intact CPAC now. Our website stoppolicecrimes.com. You know, um, zoom in a little more on this. Zoom in a little more on this. This is our um, CPAC Alliance. This is our CPAC Alliance flyer right here. You can go on stoppolicecrime.com to go sign our petition for a Civilian Police Accountability Council. And I'm going to turn this over. Right now, I'm going to turn this over. Okay. And when you turn it over, you see where we're located at. We're located at 1325 South Wabash. So we have meetings there every Monday at 6 o'clock from 6 to 8 every Monday at 1325 South Wabash, Suite 105, um, Chicago, Illinois, you know. So I definitely like for people to come out to the meeting and see what the meeting's about because we definitely need more volunteers. We need more organizers. And we need more revolutionaries dedicated to the struggle because unity plus vic plus unity. <laughs> I almost messed it up a little bit. Then the unity plus struggle plus organization equals that victory, and that's what we're pushing towards. We're pushing towards victory, victory. Where here in America, we definitely have a caller on the line. Caller, we have a caller. Yes, on. Young man. Yes, yeah. yes, young man. 
How you, you doing? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Listen, stuff you st- talking isn't bad. Believe me. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is it's always the police fault. Mm-hmm. Always. You haven't said nothing good about the police. Maybe you don't believe there's anything good about the police. Yeah. So without, without them, without them trying to help at least, now with the cameras and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see what's going on, and then judge. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the past. I mean, a lot of people have died. You know, and a lot more are going to die on the west side and the south side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Put in a half a good word for them, and maybe they're saying, you know, maybe, maybe this guy's all right, and they're, they're still doing what they're supposed to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You see, so this shouldn't be angry amongst anybody. No revolution, unless, unless of course, they do something that's really, really, really outrageous. Mm-hmm. All right, sir. Thank you so much, young man. Yeah, you are right on. Thank you for definitely calling in, caller. And I'm definitely gonna respond back to that. Um, the comment that the brother made. He called in and said that you know we. Uh, um, another thing too for people who want to call in, our number three one two seven three eight one zero six zero. Okay, um, yes, the caller had called in and said that we are sitting up here talking about. Well, me specifically, I'm sitting up here talking about what the police do wrong and not what the community to um do wrong. Well, I know I I know I am highlighting police crimes, you know, um because that is the focus right now is to highlight the police crimes. You know, if you watch the news, you see our crimes done every day, even not the big outrageous crimes they still put highlighted on and make us look real bad as a people. See, I'm not here to say that the black-on-black violence or the white-on-white violence or the Latino-on-Latino violence is bad in the inner cities. You know, that's what Donald Trump wants to hear. I'm not here to say that. I'm here to say that the way we are policed, the way we are policed in these communities, you know, the way our education has been cut and the way... We are, these communities are struck by poverty. You know, that's what I was here to talk about. Um, I know we definitely got problems within the black um, community. Also, when it comes towards gun violence. At the same time, um, the black community is very poverty struck. So we do not make or we do not produce or ship any type of guns at mass productions. So the only people that really do guns with mass production is um, what you call white people. You know what I'm saying? Really, uh, really the high elite class that really deal with mass production of um, automatic weapons and definitely um, pistols, pistols, semi-automatic weapons. But see, black folks, we just really get our hands on it through through loopholes that was created by who the people that are study making these guns at mass production for their profit. You know, um, it was it it, it it was definitely it was definitely a, a time a time where it was hard to get guns. You know what I'm saying? Well, now it's seemed more easy to get guns. Why is that? You know what I'm saying? So now we got to start looking at these gun traffickers. You know, who are the gun traffickers? Or who are the arms dealers? That's not not the gun tra. Who are the arm dealers? That's the question we need to be coming up to the uh, asking. Anytime we want to bring up Chicago violence, you know, let's ask who are the arm dealers are, um, and let's go after these people. But see, if you do go after these people, just like if you'll be going after um, these big drug cartels or something like that, you will always find the root of your problem lies in your government, you know, so... If you do go at these big arm dealers, you'll probably end up bumping into the CIA or the FBI somewhere down the line. Because these people, they want to see the destruction of these lower class and um, black communities. They, def- they definitely don't want to see us progress. So they infiltrate us with drugs. As we all know what happened in the 70s and 80s, okay, we were infiltrated with drugs. Crack cocaine, 
Crack cocaine, yes, crack cocaine got infiltrated, and that was brought in by the CIA from Nicaragua, the first place to really start doing that mass production. Um, so these 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 things was brought in, not made here, but brought in here, you know, and. Even amongst Latino Americans, you know, we can't say that cocaine even comes from them. See, what the government did with the cocoa plant was find a way to attract, to extract the values from it, okay, that 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 gets you that high. They was find a way, they found a way to extract that from that plant and to produce this substance that is highly addictive. And then they drop tons and tons of this substance off. And not their communities, in our communities, which eventually led out to their communities. And now they got uh, war on drugs because they started that war on drugs. But my whole point of saying that is because we can't start talking about the violence. We can't start talking about the drugs. We can't start. You, you can't even talk about prostitution until you start talking about the government. Okay, the government got all the cards. We have to realize they are the lord of all vices. Everything that we're sitting up here thinking um that comes from the black community is actually created, created and controlled by our government. Okay, we we don't even control the drug um the black black people. Even though they, even though they having their songs and their music, you know, talking about getting keys and stuff like that, and you see, you you hear on TV sometimes that black people got drug stuff, but we don't control no drug market. Black 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 folk can control the drug market since 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 um since Fluky Stokes. <laughs> That's how long it been. You know what I'm saying? Been a long time. So black people, they not definitely not the ones encouraging the drugs to get sold because if you if if, if you think that, well, look, it it'd be a lot more rich, but look, a lot more rich black for hold on real quick. Look at our overhead. And I want y'all to check out something real quick. Check this out. Stop police crimes right here. Stop police crimes. This is our website right here. I want y'all to go to that website um at stoppolicecrimes.com. Okay, sign our petition and share our petition because we definitely need our petition signed and shared throughout all Chicago if we want to get this city ordinance passed within Chicago. Because getting the city ordinance passed within Chicago, as you can see, is being held up by the Public Safety Committee, and we have to make sure we push on our aldermen. We have to make sure we push on our aldermen to say that they won't see CPAC. And not COPA. And that's another thing that we're fighting against too. Is the uh COPA. COPA is trying to say that they're CPAC. So we got a phony CPAC out there that was created by Ron Emanuel called COPA and is led by Lori Lightfoot. Um Lori Lightfoot, she's another uh, police officer, ex-police officer, is, sits on the police uh board. And these people are trying to take CPAC. And make CPAC something else, you know. And I, CPAC is not CPAC is not that, you know. So we definitely have to be pushing towards this. We definitely got to make sure that we stay up on CPAC. We get the pushing for CPAC. And call in if you have any questions. Our number is three one two seven three eight ten six zero. And if you want to ask any questions, got any comments, feel free to call in and definitely have. A conversation with me because I'm definitely all about politics and love to make sure that black people, we as a people, have a say, okay, and also have power, some type of political power, you know, because if we don't have political power, then where is our power within this country, you know? So we have to make sure that we have some type of political power and get the pushing because. It's the people that's going to make the change. It's the people that's going to make the revolution. It's the people that's going to make the change. You know, so we have to make sure that it's a people thing. Definitely call in if y'all have any questions. Feel free to call in. 312-738-1060. Feel free to call in. Um, and definitely 
Unity plus struggle plus organization equals victory. So if we want this victory, you got to come join CPAC. CPAC is the victory that we're looking for within Chicago. So if we want the victory, then we definitely have to have CPAC, you know. So CPAC is definitely the victory that we got to have. CPAC is definitely the victory that we have to have, you know. So if we want to have CPAC, we have to make sure that we keep fighting for CPAC. Contact us, contact us, contact us. I can't make it no more clear. You definitely have to contact us and get in touch with us to make sure that you become a part of this struggle and become a part of this fight because it's an everyday fight. It don't stop. It just keep going and going and going. You know, I, def um, I definitely want to say thank you to the... <laughs> I definitely want to say thank you, okay, because we have to, we have to remember that it's uh, Black History Month. Even though every month is Black History Month and every day is Black History Day, I like to also look at Black History Month, not as Black History Month, but it's more of a veterans, more of a veterans day for Black History Month, you know what I'm saying? So I like to be saying, thought I'm saying thank you um, to our Revolutionary veterans that had died in the struggle for us, um, Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, and Huey P. Newton. We have a caller coming in. Caller. Hi, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Is there any more information about the police board meetings and how can we get there? Yeah, we have a police board meeting today at... um. It's going to be a police board meeting today that COPA is going to be at at 7.30 today. It starts at 7.30 today on 35th and Michigan. So if you can make it over there by 7.30 on 35th and Michigan, they're going to be having a police um police board panel speaking about COPA and how they can start COPA. So they're going to be having that panel today at 73rd in Michigan. I mean, at 7.30 on 35th and Michigan at the police headquarters. So if y'all can make it over there, definitely look. Um, start making it over there because that's that's what's going to be happening today, and we definitely want to give a thanks to um yeah 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 we got to make sure that we have a nice turnout um at that police station on thirty fifth in Michigan because we want to start picketing them and making sure that they know and the people know that this is not CPAC. Copa is not CPAC. Ron Emanuel CPAC is not the people CPAC. We got two different CPACs, and that's the problem right now. You know, we have the phony, we have the real. They CPAC is the phony, we are the real. See, we gonna make sure the people understand this and make sure they get our message. And the way we do that is through unity, through struggle, and through organization. Those are the three things that's gonna make this thing happen. You know, so um, we ready. We 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 ready for the unity. You know, because because we unified already. The struggle is something we born into. You know what I'm saying? The organization is something we taught by our elders. Victory is something we are ready to taste. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we always got to keep pushing towards to make sure that we have that organization, unity, plus that struggle. And that's what's going to get us that victory, y'all. So if y'all ready to struggle and ready to organize and ready to unify, then definitely get ready for revolution. Because revolution is the only solution to this decadent society that we call the United States. Yes, indeed. We have a caller. Caller? Yes. Yes. How you doing? Good. Good. Basically, I was just gonna, I was just going to ask your opinion on the Trump anti-airplane ban. Oh, uh, for the immigrants. Yeah. Oh yeah, Trump is wrong for that. He definitely shouldn't be banning those immigrants. Um, for coming in. Definitely, when the United States made these countries the way they is in the first place. Um, Libya, Libya was one country that was a beautiful place at one time. Um, even though do 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 due to what the United States said was going on in Libya. Libyans um 
it wasn't a lot of Libyans leaving Libya, you know, because of how their leader was treating them, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, and they killed that man in the streets, you know. And now they trying to tell his people that they can't come over to the United States when the United States are the ones who created the problem, such as Syria and um, also in Iran. So the United States is known for creating these social problems in these countries, then turn around and give these people the finger. Yes, indeed. But this is going to be all the time we have, though, caller. Thank you for calling in. Come check us out. Come to our meeting on the 6, 6 p.m. every Monday on 1325 South Wabash, Suite 105. Stop police crime. Stop police violence. Stop police brutality. Join CPAC, because CPAC means stand up and fight back and don't never take no smack. Right on. Y'all have a nice day. Unity plus struggle plus organization equals victory. And victory is what we all want to taste. Thank you. Bye-bye.